We've made a whole bunch of changes to the mixer and we've added a whole raft of new features here in the mixer, which is really, really exciting. One of which is fader flip, which is extremely cool. So what you need to do to get this to happen is you can right click on any send. Let's choose, for example, this one here. If I right click here, um, I can now do flip faders to whole reverb. And now the faders, as you can see, have all gone this dark green and any ones that are active on the whole reverb, not only is the, uh, the send itself highlighted, but the faders have flipped to um, the level of uh, send being sent to the whole reverb and they are a light green. So if they are inactive, they are dark green. And if they are active, they are light green, which is very, very cool. And you'll also notice that there is a fader flip button over here. So I can switch from hall to room reverb. And we can see that there's a couple of things that have switched on over there, or I can go analog delay. And we can see that there's only one here. And again, the plugin is highlighted. Oh, there's one here as well, but this one is um, deactivated. It's turned off. Uh, or we can turn off fader flip altogether and just go back to normal mode, which is extremely handy. And this has been a major feature request for a very long time. And we've also got pop-up faders as well now for um, for pan effects and key mix sends. So, for example, if I um, double click on the send level here, this opens this expanded view. So no more fiddling around with that tiny little um, pan thing at the bottom here, which was really, really hard to get to. And now it's just very, very easy. You can just move it wherever you want. And you can change the, the um, pre fader on off. And if you click on this little down arrow here, look what we have. Lock pan to channel is an option that has been asked for for a very long time. And that is now available, uh, which is extremely cool. And again, you've got the fader flip there as well. So this just makes it a lot easier to access your sends and send levels and send um, panning controls as well as being able to lock the um, lock the pan to channel, which is very, very exciting. Um, so that is well worth you guys exploring. And then if you just want to get out of that expanded view, you just click away and it goes away. All right. So the other thing we're going to take a quick look at is some alternative panning modes for the channel panners. And this is great on the stereo bus channels over here. So if I was to double click the pan value here, this opens up an expanded view for that as well. But the cool thing here is that I can change it from the regular balance panner that we have had forever. But if I click this little down arrow, we now have a dual pan. And we also have a binaural pan as well. Uh, which is uh, very cool. And we you can expand the width, uh, which is also very exciting. And again, you can kind of control click to, to set everything to zero. Um, but the dual pan controls are very exciting. You can just kind of wipe across however you want it to appear. And again, control click will set things back. And then again, if you want to close that view, you just click away from it and it closes it. We also have sends on effects channels, as I think you probably had already spied, which is very cool because that means I can send this delay to this room reverb just by clicking the plus button and I can go and click that. And then I can change it to a pre fader send if I want to, which is tremendously exciting. This has actually been something that I have personally campaigned for for a long time. Uh, okay, so we're now going to flip over to another song to explore some other equally fantastic options. Um, and this seems to have got stuck in the mode that I didn't want. <laughs> Maybe I forgot to turn it back. There we go. And then I'm going to remove that there. We're going to flip over to a different song. And we're going to feature this song again 
in a standalone video, which I'll talk about in a little while. So if I open up this song here, I can show you that we now have sidechain audio input for virtual instruments. So this is really, really exciting. And this works with VST2, VST3, and AU. So if you have an instrument like that, that requires an audio source, such as a sampler or a vocoder, you now have access to uh, the audio source within the mixer using a sidechain input. So this is very, very exciting. And the way you get to this is you need to um, open the editor and uh, you locate the sidechain menu in the editor. All right, so um, let's do that. What we're gonna, uh, what I'm gonna show you here is with this vocal track, I'm gonna set up a side, I have a sidechain set up for this already um, to this other instrument here, this Mai Tai here. Um, and so now I can have this audio source and you can see it says vocoder. So I'm gonna show this as well. So if I open this, we have this brand new plugin, which I'm gonna talk about in much more detail in a another standalone video, which will feature um, another new plugin alongside this. We've also got a de -esser, and also I'm gonna show you changes that we've made to the Pro EQ, which are very, very exciting. But as if that's not enough, the vocoder on its own is tremendously exciting. So for this, if I click on this sources button, you can now see that I have a sidechain option here for the output of the Mai Tai to go to this vocal, to be controlled by this vocal. Um, and this is particularly exciting for me personally. I've wanted to do this for ages because the way the way you set up a, a vocoder before was really convoluted, so I, I, I just never really got into it. But now that Presonus has made their own vocoder, um, this is very, very easy to show you. So I'm closing that and I'm gonna um, enable this track here. And I'm also going to record enable this here. And what I'm gonna do is, that wasn't meant to happen. Uh, ah, it's because that one's on, there we go. Hello, 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 hey, hello. And I'm controlling the Mai Tai chords with my voice. This is really, really exciting. Yes, I have wanted to do that for a very, very long time. <laughs> so there you go. Um, whistle stop tour there of the vocoder. That will feature in a much fuller length video, uh, which will come in this series. So if you have not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and that way you will ensure that you do not miss a thing from this series. Anyway, I'm still talking through the vocoder, so I need to turn that off. All right, so please subscribe, please hit that notification bell, and that way you will not miss any of the videos coming in this series. All right, so that is how you can do the uh, sidechain audio input for virtual instruments. And I'm just gonna show it just on the vocoder, just, just for the sake of brevity of this video. Um, but we have also, um, as you could see at least a little bit there, We've expanded some of the sidechain capabilities. Um, so you've got some different options now. So if I open this one here, uh, you will notice now that we have a send option as well as an output option. So the output uh, can be routed. So you can receive from the output of the selected channel um, into this plugin, but you can also create a send here as well. And as you can see, a send just appeared on the vocal channel and I can make this pre-fader or post-fader, whichever I want. Um, and uh, this is just a really convenient and quick and easy way. It's even quicker than it was before, and it was already quick enough for um, how we've been able to do um, side chaining 
um, in Studio One 5 in particular, but now with Studio One 6, it's even quicker. You just click on the source button and you can set up your sends, you can set up your output super duper quick. And they just appear in your sends routing um, as you'd expect them to. So that's very, very exciting. Also, we have, as, as I showed you a little bit earlier, we've got the link option for bus and effects channel panning. So I need to go back to the other song to show you this. So let's go back to Dig Myself a Hole. Okay, so we're in this one now. And what I need to do here is I double click the send slider to open the pop-up editor. So um, let's do that. So nope, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, Double click the send slider to open the pop-up editor to, um, so let's do that. There we go. And then in this option here, we've got lock pan to channel. I think I showed you this a little bit earlier. So, and then you can just click away to, to get rid of that. We've also got micro view controls for third party plugins, which is uh, very exciting. So I am going to find a channel on this song that has a third party plugin which I don't think I do anymore because I think I swapped these all out for native ones. But um, if I was to go and grab something that is not native from my effects browser, so if I went plug in Alliance and if I went and got this Opto Compressor and put this on the trumpet here, and if I just close the edit window and if I click expand, as you can see, I've now got all of these here there's all the controls for the uh, Brainworks Opto compressor that I can adjust as I would, as I might want to. And I've also, I've also got options to enable or disable plugin nap directly from within the, the plugin insert there. So that is also extremely cool. So the other major, major feature request is for track presets. And finally, in Studio One Six, we have track presets. Now I'm going to this blank song for a particular reason. I'm gonna add a track here in this song. Uh, and I'm gonna add four VO tracks, just, just because I can. And they're all going to appear in here. Now I've gone ahead and already done this, but as you can see in the effects, uh, section here of the browser, there is a new section called Track Presets, which is really exciting. Now, you will find in this section that there is a couple of folders that already have been added for you. So there's an audio one, and you've got presets for beats and vocals, drum kit, electric guitar, guitar and vocal. And then this, this is a vocal chain that I made from um, Dig Myself a Hole, my other song. And uh, basically I created it there. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to drag and drop this guy onto that channel there. And you will note it has um, brought over the analog delay and the room reverb and the vocal bus from Dig Myself a Hole. We can go over to Dig Myself a Hole and we can scroll across and we can see that there's the Pro EQ and with the routing to the Vox bus, the lead Vox bus. If I go over to leads Vox bus, there's all those plugins on that bus. And if I go back over to the track presets demo song, you'll see that all of that is now there. Um, so the very, very cool thing here is if I were to click on this channel here, uh, and let's say I wanted to copy and paste this channel setting onto these other VO channels. I can do that quite easily. I can click on here and I can go copy uh, channel settings and then I can select this channel, hold shift, select this one and I can paste the channel settings. Now, 
you can see that it hasn't changed the output to the lead vocal bus, but it has put in the Pro EQ settings, which are blank, because they are blank over here. And I did show you the Pro EQ very, very briefly. And as I said, I'm going to show you the Pro EQ uh, in a standalone video focusing on the new plugin. So I have flown over these very, very quickly. Um, but don't worry too much because I'm going to focus on the changes to the Pro EQ, the DSA, which is another new plugin, and also the vocoder in a separate standalone video. So don't worry about that. All right. So. Another fun thing that we have done, and I'm going to go over to the other song for this, is if I go into the um, options here, we have a new option called Channel Icons. And you will now see that there are a bunch of channel icons that have now populated this song. Because, I mean, these are ones that I made. And I'm going to show you in the other blank song how you can make these in just a second. But I wanted to show you how you can, um, what you, what the possibilities are. Um, so you've got channel icons, but you've also got track icons to correspond with those as well. Track icons, and there they all are, including drums and overheads there and everything else that you might possibly want. This has been a feature request for quite a long time as well. Uh, and these are extremely cool. I like these. This is pretty. I didn't think I would, I'll be honest. You know, when people were making feature requests for track icons, I thought, yeah, I'm not sure I want those. I'm not sure that it's, it's just going to look tacky and cheesy. I was wrong. These are really nice. I really like the way that the guys over in Hamburg have designed these. These are lovely. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can create those. Let's go over to the blank song and we will show channel icons. And you'll see that these have already appeared because these are basically copied channel settings from this one channel here. But let's clear the board. Let's go and get rid of all these channels. So we will remove selected tracks. And we will create four more channels. And we'll go back into here. And I am going to remove this bus here. And to remove. And I'm going to remove these as well and remove that one. All right, so we are back to our basic. So what you need to do to create to create the track icons is double click and then up pops this list and you've got an all section and this shows you everything that is possibly available for a track icon currently. I'm sure that this will be added to uh, eventually. Um, and you've also got options for different families of instruments or groups of instruments. So we've got brass here. We've got drums. We've got guitars, including pedal steel. And we've got some amps and full stacks, combos, half stacks, basses, banjos. And we've got sitar, shamisen, and a ukulele as well. And in the keyboards, we've got all of these, including organ, synth, vibraphone, which is technically a keyboard instrument, although it's technically also a percussion instrument, piano. We've got keyboards and accordion, clavinet. The only thing missing here, for my opinion, is an electric piano. That would be nice. Then we've got this other one. So if you need kind of other icons, like a video track, which by the way, is now something that we have in Studio One Six, we have a dedicated video track. I'm going to get to that in a little moment. And of course, you can have the, the the rock horns, hand gesture if you really want it. And then there's percussion, there's strings, there's vocals, including a wireless mic and woodwinds, including uh, some cool things like bassoon, bass clarinet, baritone sax, alto sax, clarinets, flutes, oboes, saxophone, woodwinds section in general, 
um, and then you can reset if you need to. So uh, for this one, we want vocals. So let's go to vocals and we will have lead vocals. And then let's say these ones are backing vocals. And I think I can just hold shift and I can select all three of those and I can go for vocals, or I can go for choir, uh, or I can go for crowd, whichever you prefer. Any of those will, will do quite nicely. And you will notice we've done those in the channels, but when I go to track icons, the same ones appear in the, uh, in the track view as well as in the mix of you, which is very, very handy as well. We've also got um, some additions to uh, the channel visibility so that you can um, show and hide different things. So let's go back over to dig myself a hole and we'll get the mixer open. And so in here, what we need to do to show the, the visibility is we need this visibility button open. And then there's your channel list. And then you've got, as we had before, waves, virtual instruments, effects, buses, VCAs, auxiliaries, and I forget what this one is, remote bank. Okay, if I click on these three dots here, I can show all channel, I can show any that are soloed and any that are muted, and I can hide any that are muted and any that are, um, are uh, disabled. So I don't have any soloed at the moment. So let's go and solo a few at random. Let's see, what else can we solo? There we go. So I've soloed a few. So if I go over to here and if I now go show solo tracks, only the ones that are soloed are now viewed. And of course I can customize a little bit. If I go, well, you know what? I've got the trumpet, but I want, and the tenor sax, but I also want to see the baritone sax as well. I can stick that one in as well. Um, albeit it's not muted. Um, and then if I go undo visibility change, um, now we're just back to all of those that are just soloed. Uh, and then I can go back to all channels again, and I can undo all the solos. Show muted channels. All right, so let's just go and mute these ones here. And then I can go show muted channels. Bingo. Only the muted channels are shown. And then I can go back to all, and then I can undo the all mute. So those um, are going to be useful uh, channel visibility options right there. And finally, um, in this section of this video, we're going to look at the export mixdown options because now we've got target loudness options for export mixdown. So if I go to song, export mix down, you'll now see I can select the loudness options here. And there's a whole range of these, including YouTube Tidal, Spotify SoundCloud, EBU um, R128, and so on and so forth. And you can adjust to your taste, or you can just turn that off if you don't want to. Um, so that's handy for those of you that are exporting directly to SoundCloud, which you might be. If you're doing that, then you would want to just select SoundCloud and the max loudness will be set to minus 14 LUFS and the true peak will be negative one dB. And all of this is applied whilst it is mixing down, just like it is for the project page. 